Welcome back to Sprague River Homestead. So last week we said we were going to take a break on the sunroom. We still haven't put the windows in, but we, if you look inside there, we did have a nice setup for last weekend. Nikki had some friends down, and we had a nice, uh, I think it was Saturday night, had a nice evening where we kind of had a uh, grill out, ate dinner out here, and enjoyed the sunroom. Even without the windows, we enjoyed it well past dark, which was awesome. So this week, well, it's been a catch-up week. We have really been uh, selling a lot of animals, everything. So rabbits have found new homes, chickens, turkeys, goslings, everything else. You can imagine uh, we're in full swing here trying to recover from, well, I guess two weeks or three weeks of construction, and now we're trying to get back to a regular farming. With most homesteads, most of the things involved in the homestead are constantly in evolution. So you can see right here, there's a big section here of just plain dirt. What was there was the big, what we call the camo house. So we had chickens in there previously. I cleaned it out, let it sit for a couple days, and now we're using it as a brooder. So over here in the red, that one there is another one of our, kind of our makeshift houses. And that hen and rooster found a new home today. They were kind of elderly and weren't really producing eggs. And we found a nice family that wanted them to chase bugs and just kind of be chickens. So we let them go today for free. And then this house here has a couple other hens in it that we're going to, I guess, take out. Nikki's going to refurbish this red one a little bit better and swap them over. And then uh, we're going to sell the other one after we fix it up. So as I get up here, you guys have seen our wood bins previously. And if you notice, there's an addition. This is what we call the camel house. Now this is actually made out of uh, ply board, really and it had a real tree camo on it, which is why we call it the camo house. This is something that Nikki built years ago, um, just as kind of a chicken thing. You can see we have no run off the back, but there's a door open, and inside we have all of our older birds. So inside of here, you can see that we have a lot of our bigger birds. The biggest ones there are turkeys, and these are two broad-breasted that we bought from the store, just to kind of show uh, the differences between those and heritage turkeys which we'd normally hatch. Everything else in here are chickens and these chickens here will be up for sale. We've got uh, two standing orders we're trying to fill uh, specific birds they're looking for so we have some uh, good customers that we hold back and grow them out to ensure that they are hens and then everything else will be sold off from there and we have a big wait list on everything else probably throughout the rest of the year but if you guys look for chickens, let us know. We, uh, we may have some extras coming up. We're not sure. Here's our smaller brooder. As you can see, there are a lot of things in there. Uh, there are five goslings right there talking to you. But the rest are chickens in there and turkeys. So finally, we figured out what the problem is with the incubator. And you, as you can see, we are covered up in birds. So these guys, a lot of these guys are about to graduate to the bigger brooder but we are hatching these almost every other day and every weekend we have a lot of stuff hatching so these guys are about to graduate out of here uh, these are kind of like the first week old and then they move out there's another gosling so I think we're down to eight of those left and this is what the incubator looks like so we have a big cabinet incubator that we bought a few years ago and we have this baby stuffed full of eggs so right now we have everything from chickens, turkeys, I think we're done with geese finally. Uh, we have chickens, turkeys, and I think ducks in there. So we have a lot of everything hatching out that we are going to uh, have up for sale eventually once these guys are done. We'll keep some of them for ourselves for uh, meat birds and that, but there's no stopping the uh, train here. So now as much as you can sit and talk about poultry all day, Nikki has done a fantastic job of uh, cleaning out all of her rabbits. So at one point, she had sold over 60 rabbits in 60 days. And she had bred you know, pretty heavy for all of her uh, shows and all that, trying to get ready for a national convention, uh, their national show for that, for their breed club. And unfortunately, all of that, every single one up through September so far has been canceled. So a lot of what she had available, well, she didn't really need. So had a lot of people uh, looking for meat rabbits. 
and that. And so she's had some really good lines that uh, produce really good full meat rabbits in that. So she let a lot of them go and well, we, we sold a lot of them. Now I did show you previously that we had a lot of goat kids. So uh, I think about a week ago or two weeks ago, we were completely done on one of our barns. We had 14 kids out of that barn and we're not started on the other one yet. Well, that has changed. Uh, we did have three born over here, which I'm gonna walk out and show you, but I'll show you this pasture right here and see if you notice anything different. So if you can see in this near pasture here, you only see a couple of goats. And as I pan around, there are almost no goats in there. Reason is we let four of our bigger boys go to a new home. We really wanted to kind of work on developing our own, kind of our own homestead goats that have a great milking potential, very good for meat. And they were uh, mostly Nubian, really kind of tall, and they were boys, and they were unweathered, so they're all intact. So we decided just to let them go. Had a new farm that wanted them uh, to basically clear brush and that. So as you can see, they have done a fantastic job cleaning out our pastures, and they're still working on this near one, but uh, they went to a new farm. What we'll call this is the first section of Baby Goat Mafia. So these are all the ones that are about three weeks old now, finally. And then we've also moved Shy back over here to protect them. She's really protective of these babies. She loves them very much. And you almost can't, uh, she'll actually fight the moms off when they're first born. So here's all the babies. You can see all of them are doing very well. 14 of them, 14 of them in here. So we're only gonna keep a couple. So most of these guys will be sold off to different farms and that awesome brush keepers and these two ladies right here in the front are our designed goats so these guys are a little bit of boar they are mostly uh, Nigerian and Nubian but they produce a lot of milk and they produce a lot of meat so these two guys are gonna be awesome and then you've got our two kinders there must be thirsty work guarding those goats so here are two of the three that have currently been born already. They are Nubians, and so you can see the nice big floppy ears, which is always fun to watch them run. But these guys are about four days old, I think, four or five days old now. So these guys are doing very well, rambunctious. They are twin boys, and we're calling them Razzle and Dazzle. So uh, I think Dazzle, well, that's not even the right ones. We're missing one, uh-oh. Anyway, Razzle is one of these guys, and then he's got a twin brother that has more of a stripe down his back, so we call him Dazzle. And then the other guy doesn't even have a name, so I don't know. We're going to have to find these guys new homes, though. Running out, running out of space for boys around here. But here's two of our babies, and if I back up, you can see all these ladies. They are just about ready to give us some more uh, babies here, so wide load coming through. Look out talk about animals all day long but I'll tell you what I was a little skeptical I didn't know uh, what it was gonna come out when Nikki said she was gonna put rabbits and chickens in here to kind of produce manure and then to grind it in but I tell you what I think the results speak for themselves so <laughs> these are collard greens and radishes over here with lettuce uh, doing very well the peas right there she's got these trellises kind of um, going up and down you can see that's just baling twine uh, and the peas are winding themselves up there they're right now flowering so that should be very good you've got kale and spinach and other things in here that she honestly said she's gonna build a big dryer and just blaze this all off to uh, kind of cut it down you can see that kale starting to flower up there on the left and even on the right so it's uh, growing almost out of control we almost can't keep up eating all this stuff and feeding it to the rabbit so doing very well and then here on the left hand side she's got her spot available for the rabbits and the chickens at night and then she's planted some more stuff here some more beans that will grow up these uh, baling twine trellises but you can see she's trying to use all the space in here it's gonna be uh, madness in here eventually this stuff is gonna grow out of control see well the garden we are definitely behind on She's been, uh, Nikki's been working out here in the garden as she can to avoid the heat. Uh, right now she's been trying to clean up these chives and that. Uh, she's been putting in some berry rows here. She's got berry plants to put in. 
So she's getting these cleaned up for that. And then slowly but surely, she's mostly doing it with my help a little bit, is getting all these potato beds in. So if I walk over here, you can kind of see some beds that are cleaned out. And she said she did have two or three of those planted today. So we're gonna run heavy on potatoes this year again. Uh, maybe offer a few for sale come this fall once we harvest them. But these are the three beds there. That one she has not planted yet, I don't think. And then the rest of these, we're just gonna slowly work on. It's been extremely hot. It's been almost like uh, 85, 90 degrees by like 10 or 11. So you really gotta get out here and get to it early. And then we've just been really busy uh, selling rabbits, selling chickens, poultry, you name it, goats are coming up, but uh, Homestead's really producing this year. We're finally getting there. So now with that production, uh, I mentioned a while ago, I'm, st I'm still furloughed um, a month in now, and my unemployment claims so far have been denied because of a clerical error. So at this point, we've gone four weeks without a true uh, paycheck, other than the farm has, doing, has been doing fantastic producing uh, we were selling rabbits, poultry, all that kind of stuff. So it's doing okay. Um, a little bit more than expected, honestly. But we're doing great, and I'll, I'll give it all the credit to Nikki. She's had the vision all this long, all the long time. Um, I, I can't say I'm doing much other than I'm, I'm labor trying to help support the vision she has for this place, which is, is doing better than I actually thought. So, But don't tell her that because, you know, I don't want her to get a big he head over it and tell me I told you so but she's doing a fantastic job. So with that, that's kind of the week that has been, uh, it seems like every day, the joke is what are we delivering today? And the people at the store near us probably wonder every day why we show up and sell something. So it seems like that's, uh, that's kind of the MO for us. They see Nikki Suburban, the black and the orange show up. We're selling something else, so who knows? But that's it guys, that's the week in, it, in itself. Uh, next week is supposed to be cooler, so we're gonna try and get the windows in the sunroom, and get a big uh, sweeping effort on the garden out here and try to get a lot of this planted. It's almost June 1st and we are extremely behind, so what, what can you do better than just put in the time and the labor? So with that, I'll let you go. Hopefully you guys are having success on your home homesteads. Let us know what you guys are doing. We like to know what everybody else is doing, especially in these tough times. It's, it's weird, right? It's a weird time. Things are starting to open back up, but it's not fully there yet. So with that, we'll see you later. Happy homesteading. Thanks for watching. Spray Homestead. Leave it out.